right. Hello, everybody. Wow, this is really loud. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Edmonton League of Legends Open Plan number three on Saturday here. We've got two teams today, so we'll be doing a best of three for seeding. The, both these teams will be going on to Sunday, but, uh, you know, it's important to see who's first seed, who's second seed out of the play-ins. And uh, we're starting off NKC versus Kevin's Wild Boy Supreme. Uh, two long-standing teams in the Edmonton scene, though they may change their names every now and then. Once in a blue moon, we'll see different names from these wonderful competitors here, but the Wild Boys are taking on the NKCs this time. Wild Boys won the uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors, so they did choose to start on the purple side uh, for this match as well, too, which is a definite change to the meta, not something that you see uh, or used to see very commonly. Yeah, no, it's, uh, every now and then you get a season where, uh, the meta changes between whether you want blue side or red side, and, uh, it's, it's how heavily counterpicks are a big part of the meta, and, or how strong a specific champion is over, like, everything else in the game. Or a double pick, for example. Or a double pick, yeah. Mm -hmm. So first pick, we do see the Graves coming out. We saw a wonderful Graves game earlier uh, this series um, on Thursday night in the jungle, putting on a very, very uh, heavy damage uh, performance from Antimi, who is, uh, I believe they advanced to the finals, so that we will be seeing them again on Sunday. And we do see a quick double pick of the Lucian Nami for that bot lane for Kevin's Wild Boys. Yeah, Lucian Nami, pretty strong laning presence there, uh, as I'm just trying to get my microphone set up properly here. <laughs> Seemed like I was coming in a bit too loud. So. Oh, it might have just been your headset, I think. Might be, but, but yeah. just making sure. Sounds uh, good to me. Lucian Nami, very strong laning presence. That uh, extra damage that you get with Nami's E onto giving that to Lucian is very easy to proc. You get three bolts with it. Lucian, obviously, with the double tap, able to proc that quite well. Get a lot of damage out that way. Decent sustain from Nami and decent lockdown as well. So, very aggressive lane that you can have there. Yeah, and Lucian with his uh, dashing forward, easy to get. Uh, full utility out of Nami's heal slash damage ability on her Q as well, too. Uh, just all in all, a really strong combo in that bot lane. And Watery picking up the rumble. One of the classic Watery uh, picks. I uh, haven't seen him... In a while, oh my god, I was going to say, I haven't seen him in a couple, but it's been two years, so it, that's... Uh, it has, it's been a very long time. Yeah, it's been a bit, but uh, we are going to get to see some Rumble play. Rumble, always exciting, uh, always a potential for massive team fight uh, wins or losses, depending on how you place your equalizer, so... Uh, great to see that champion coming in here. We do see a Fiora ban targeted at... I wonder who... Uh, not playing as uh, yeah. the normal name that we've uh, come accustomed to. I think he's playing as Alt Pro today, Chasing Summer, or maybe Two Sky. Hard to uh, hard to know for sure. Uh, we have yeah. Conrad on Cupic. We got Hanul, K for Kimchi. Everyone else I recognize. Yeah, but, no, it's those two names are a little bit different than usual. So we'll see exactly who's who. As we get into game, probably here. We will. And the monkey last ban. Monkey, a paw, uh, popular jungler that we've seen a lot of these games. And we do, it looks like we might see a Shen pick up here. Uh, I'm assuming that would be, uh, oh, I, I actually don't know. We'll see where they decide to put that pick if they do pick him at this point. Um, Watery, we, I just assumed, was going to be in the top lane on that rumble. That rumble could be mid. Uh, Shen could have been in the jungle as well, too. But it looks like they're going to opt for the Lee Sin instead. Yeah, Lee Sin seems to always be find his way around in the meta. Uh, like no matter what, like there's there's those Lee Sin diehards that will always play Lee Sin because he's just he can offer so much to a game. Yeah, he brings uh, a lot. He has a high skill cap, high uh, high damage in the early game, a lot of mobility, uh, just a lot of things that in general a jungler is uh good 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 to have on them oh gwen we did see a gwen game earlier this series gwen uh with her scissors uh chopping up the opposing top lane mundo the only time we saw the mundo have any sort of a hard lane uh and we do see the shen being hovered one more time this may yeah. be a 
uh, Team Troll. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it could be. I'm believing they, now. Yes, I, I like. did see some talks about needing to practice Shen in uh, all chat before the game here. <laughs> so, well. They're not going to practice them right now. We are not going to see the Shen. We are going to see the Kennen instead. And it yeah. looks like we've got uh, Kennen possibly going towards the top lane. Uh, Rumble, it looks like, might be our mid laner this game. And we're going to see a Senna Jin versus a Lucian Nami in the bot lane. And a Seraphine, Seraphine for Cupic in the mid. Very exciting game. So we, we've seen Seraphine a couple times so far in this tournament. And I believe... All of the games so far have been support Seraphine. We haven't gotten an actual lane Seraphine. We did get the duo uh, Seraphine with Senna. It was uh, yeah, it, it was a carry, but more like outside of the bot lane. Yes, we haven't seen Seraphine yes, yet. Yeah, for sure. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be so. gonna be interesting to see what comes out of this Cupic pick of Seraphine. Yeah, and. Uh, the Gwen Cannon actually could be a very interesting matchup in the top lane. Cannon has that bit of range that he can kind of stay away from Gwen for a, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and with the energy regen, doesn't have to worry about mana as much. But uh, Gwen, definitely one of those laners that can kind of do everything in the top lane. Yeah, and uh, uh, Two Sky, one of the stronger top laners that we've ever seen in uh, in in our in our games. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was the chance for uh, this team to be in the Challenger Series once upon a time uh, before certain... Some members, some members. Some members, yeah. Before certain things happened, and then, you know, Edmonton was in the news for League of Legends for the first time in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, this, this is a team that's always... Both of these teams have always been very very good at what they do they're always placing high in these tournaments and when they do match up it's always a pleasure to watch yeah always bringing great games that's for sure um always supporting the local scene uh ready to compete eager anxious excited we're getting into the games it's been a long time but we're working it back minute and a half before we get to see uh what type of madness these guys are bringing to the table Hello, folks, and we are live in our first game of the day. This is going to be a best of three series. Note the scores. 0-0, zero, zero, first game of the series. NKC on the blue side versus Kevin's Wild Boy Supreme on the red side. And coming out here, we do see a default start for most of these teams. Um, giving up nothing, risking nothing. Just uh, looking to see if any sort of invades coming through from the opponents. They don't see anything. Going to be a pretty uneventful uh, first start of the match. Yeah, the classic line of scrimmage setup. Players spread right across that river. But no invades. Nothing's really fancy going to happen. And pretty easy start for both teams. Red buff start for both Graves and Lee Sin, it looks like. Yeah, both uh, going to be mirroring the same path, it looks like. Uh, we'll probably see... Well, it'll be interesting to see where they choose to take their uh, ganks. Uh, sometimes you can see Lee Sin go for that red and then go for a level 2 surprise. Not super common, uh, but uh, when it does come out and you're not expecting it, it can easily at least burn your flash and uh, possibly burn your entire health bar. Yeah, and that might be something that they really look to do in this top lane. Uh, try and get that Gwen a uh, little bit behind early on and help out the Kennen a bit. Because that isn't necessarily... Kennen's not necessarily the best top laner in the current meta, I feel. But uh, he still works up there. Gwen is definitely a meta top laner. So see what kind of happens in this matchup. Yeah, Kennen, one of those champions that I really do love. He synergizes extremely well with the Rumble as well, too. Probably the reason that they went for the pick here. Uh, looking for that AoE into AoE AP destruction. Watery going very aggressive here onto Cupic. Doesn't mind it at all. Has a Scrap Shield. Free trades for him. Forces Cupic off the CS a little bit. Yeah, and uh, yeah, definitely wants to try and stay, 
keep ahead while he can here with that scrap shield uh, before that Q damage starts adding up and maybe gets harassed off these minions a lot more. Mm -hmm. And we did see uh, Celesteria and Busty Senpai able to push the wave to get that level 2 first in the bot side. Uh, they probably started on the minions as well too, a little bit ahead, as we did have Canadian and All Pro helping with a little bit of leash. Close one onto Busty Senpai. Does manage to dodge it though, trades back some damage. Uh, no kill potential right now here in the bot side. Uh, with the wave being pushed in really far, at least in uh, finishing his blue buff right now. Um, and uh, Graves also on the blue side of the map. Watery, so much damage. Coming in close to a tower, but not triggering the tower damage. Uh, getting out with a basically a free trade there onto Q-Pick. Yeah, no, you definitely like to see that as Rumble being able to get away with a lot of damage early on and try to push that lead and get yourself into the mid game as quick as you can. And uh, it was pinged out that there is a red ward in the tri brush on the top side by, uh, I'm assuming, by Two Sky. Mm -hmm. And we do see the Lee Sin here now is moving into the opposing jungle, uh, possibly going to be making a path here to the bot lane. Oh, uh, Celesteri gets rooted there, wanting to extend this trade. We have a bubble being landed, and they're pushing forward. And here comes Kitsune from the backside, misses his Q, not going to be able to connect there, forces him back. And they're not going to be able to pick up a kill. A lot of damage being traded by Canadian and All-Pro onto the gank there in the bot side. Uh, I am Kitsune. going to be able to walk away, though. Uh, meanwhile, top lane, a, a big damage trade, too, from the Gwen and the Cannon. A lot of fighting going on in the map already this game, but completely even gold. 6.4 to 6.4, 6.5 .4, 6 to 6.5. Ooh, the bubble forces the flash off All-Pro, but the snare turnaround again. A lot of action going on this bot side here, and Alt Pro not having his flash now. Going to be an open gank for that Lee Sin in the future. Yeah, both the laners in uh, the bot side for uh, NKC burning, having to burn flash there. Really good flash by Canadian to get away from the Lee Sin on that entrance, flash to the Q, and uh, really slowed down that gank attempt. Ooh, Two Sky going in for a massive damage trade. As you can see, Ryotros at a very low health point, very vulnerable. We do have Graves on the backside as well, too. Doesn't look like he's going to get a gank opportunity, though. Ryu is staying away, but Kefir Kimchi spots Katsuni. Katsuni doing some aggressive counter jungling. Going to be able to get collapsed on here from the Kennen, but uh, just enough to force him off of uh, their golems. That was actually Kimchi there with the You're right. uh, counter jungling. Yes, uh, it <laughs> was Kitsune coming over to try and get the scraps left there. So, yeah, but misspeak. Um, yeah, no, it's a very close game, and Ooh. the ulti dropping from Rumble here. Flash forward, Cupid going very low, will not go down. Watery being able to just live through the Scrap Shield oh. and the W from Kitsune. Tower shot onto Kitsune. First blood goes to Watery. He will go down to the tower as Two Sky coming in, trying to clean up Kitsune as Lisa now trapped by the Raptors. Oh, and tries to make a play for it, but Cupid gets the level six, tosses out the ultimate. Uh, and is going to be able to get the charm onto Lee Sin. So Lee Sin's not able to follow up with his Q. Uh, he was so low there. Uh, could have been the potential for a trade, but uh, not the people you want to put the kills on. Two kills onto that top lane Gwen, where Ryuteros was already having a hard time dealing with this Gwen in the top lane. Yeah, sitting even CS, but those two kills are going to make that an unbearable top lane. Uh, Watchery does get first blood in the mid lane, but two assists onto Seraphine. Pretty even trade overall for that mid lane. Some wards being cleared out in the bottom side. Uh, we might see Kitsune come target bot lane a bit more here with both those summoners still down for another uh, two and a half minutes here. And we do have junglers getting their first respawns on their buffs as well too. Lee Sin already started on his red. Uh, Graves in the area. Lee Sin gonna be on the top side of the map. Uh, It'll be interesting to see if they choose to try and make a Baron play at the seven minute point area. We've been seeing a lot of dragons, first dragons coming out between the six and eight minute point so far in these games, but it doesn't look like they're being uh, expending a lot of resources to make that a possibility right now. Yeah, we do have the Rift Herald coming up in 40 seconds here. Uh, Ocean Drake is available as well, so 
Uh, it does seem Lee Sin moving towards the bot side here, going to pick up his blue, and then uh, with Graves mirroring that, so the pressure will be towards uh, Kevin's Wild Boy Supreme here for this early Ocean Drake if they want it. Yeah, with Lee Sin on the bottom side of the map, we'll, if they can get a play here onto the bot lane, that's really what they're looking for to open this uh, up for them. Uh, Busty Senpai gonna get snared here, goes in with the counter bubble. Senna able to walk away, Celesteri going for the trade. So much damage onto Senna, has to switch onto Canadian now. Uh, they're gonna trade almost even there at the end of those uh, that little fight. And we do see Rumble and Lee Sin. Rumble all from behind, coming on the backside. No escape path available for Canadian. Teleport is not available for Gwen, she's not gonna be able to come in. Celesteri taking a lot of damage, the root for Rumble under the tower. The speed up from Busty Senpai is not enough, he will go down one for two. Kitsune almost falls as well. No jungler going to be able to be in the area to uh, capitalize on that, but instead, the Rift Herald being taken by Graves for free. And it looks like it's going to be a Rift for Dragon Swap. Kitsune doing an aggressive dragon here, knowing that the jungler's not uh, around to contest him. Uh, this would be a crazy play if they didn't have an idea of where Graves was. Yeah, and Graves now with the Rift Herald. 100% confirmed where he was, and... Uh... Pretty easy Ocean Drake pickup after that dive in the bot lane. Maybe a little bit early on that dive, though, um, as the Rift Herald actually dropped immediately in the mid lane. Gonna and get... no equalizer available for Rumble. Not going to be able to uh, use that to clear out the wave, but uh, quickly does deal with that uh, Rift Herald. Tower is very low. He does get charmed here. K for Kimchi coming in with so much grave damage to help out Cupic. Cupic and K for Kimchi are going to take him down, and they've got a wave, so they might be able to break this mid tower here. What a play. Rift Herald into surprise gank, and the possibility that they could break open the mid tower at sub 10 minutes. Yeah, Watchery caught thinking probably that the, uh, they just wanted to get the back there, put the Rift Herald out for some pressure so Cupid could get it back, K for Kimchi going as well, but that was not the case. They were waiting in the bush, ready for Rumble to just poke his head out, and yeah, that doesn't end up being the first tower going down. Uh, Cupic will take this opportunity to back now. No, yeah, so Cupic opted, instead of killing the tower, he opted to allow the tower to deny the wave to Rumble instead, uh, figuring probably that he would be able to finish off that tower fairly easily when he comes back. Uh, it allows the lane to reset in a way that he's not going to have to play forward and be vulnerable. So probably a very good decision by Cupic not to make the aggressive play for the tower, which I certainly know I would have gone for, and probably died as soon as I came back to lane as a result. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's often how it goes. You think you get that advantage with the tower, and then suddenly there's four people in your lane all the time. <laughs> and uh, so far, pretty even still. Just a, a one, basically a 1k gold lead between the two. Mm -hmm. Lee Sin looking for a gank here on the mid lane is spotted out. They do know he's in the area. Graves in the area as well, too. Meanwhile, in bot lane, uh, the main focus of the damage. A lot of trading coming in between these two uh, two uh, duos here in the lane. Oh, and right then, massive trade coming through. Nami not able to connect onto the uh, Senna there, but very close to being an instant burst there on the support in that bot lane. Yeah, and importantly, flash burn yet again. Pretty much on cooldown, the Senna's flash is going down here. So that is a very dangerous place uh, to be as a Senna. You you have the invisibility, but not that much mobility overall. So And Rio Churros doing a good job not allowing Gwen to extend that lead in the top lane. Only down 7 CS uh, after Gwen didn't make that roam and pick up two kills. Not allowing her to extend it even further, which was definitely the worry when she managed to pick up both those kills in the mid lane. Yeah, and now Canadian and all pro going in, trying to get the catch onto K for Kimchi and Busty Senpai. They will be able to get under tower. The ultimate coming out from the flash forward by Canadian actually takes the Lee Sin kick for K for Kimchi, and that will be a cleanup. Four members in the bot lane, just everybody coming in one after another. K for Kimchi does manage to live under the tower. The ultimate from Kennen is burned for pretty much nothing there. Yeah, TP and ultimate burned by the Kennen, not required at the end. Nice snare there from Cupid, countering uh, the equalizer from Watery, popping it onto him so he's not able to do his full combo uh, onto Cupid. Get that shield. 
Uh, so really nice counterplay there uh, from Cupic as he presses onto his tower, uh, trying to break open that mid lane that has dropped so low now. Yeah, another plate picked up in the bot lane as well. Cupic, with that major health advantage in the mid lane, will be able to take the first tower here. Mid lane opened up. That is what you like to see to start the game if you're NKC. And uh, we'll see what the Seraphine, mid Seraphine can do. Mm-hmm. As they're going forward. Yeah, the laning phase. Leandri's now completed for Seraphine. Uh, big pickup for her. Uh, Rumble not quite completed his uh, first major item. Very close, though. And uh, we are seeing a teleport advantage right now on the side of NKC. Uh, Dragon's going to be spawning in a little bit over a minute. We'll see if they're able to take that uh, top lane TP advantage and turn it uh, into equalizing this Dragon score. Yeah, and will be an Ocean Drake. Ag no, it shouldn't be an Ocean Drake again. Uh, it might be. That's what the game seems to think it is. We'll see what we get. We'll just uh, take a quick look down here. It is one of the Drakes that I don't know. <laughs> nice, Kevin. <laughs> I don't those... know what that symbol means either. I'm not going to lie. I don't pay close enough attention. It... It's not the Hextech one, because we saw that earlier, and that's not the Hextech symbol. Mm -hmm. Graves has already started onto it, and it is the Hextech one. <laughs> Does it say? Pretty sure that's Hextech, isn't it? I don't think it is. It looks Hextech It might be. To me. Hextech Drake. Boom. Boom. There we go. There we go. I was wrong. Confirmation from the game. The Infernal Blazes. The rest of the dragons are going to be fire dragons this yep. game. Damage, damage, damage. Celestia going for the quick trade onto All Pro. The ultimate coming out from Nami. Not going to be able to connect, but he keeps fighting, and he's got just enough damage to bring her down. With that massive burst, that damage combo from the Nami Lucian in that bot lane. We talked about it in Champion Select, and it is uh, playing a major role here now. 5 0 0 on the Lucian, able to pick up a lot of those kills when the teammates did collapse on the bot side. So a massive amount of gold onto Celesteri. Yeah, and that's a good person to have it on. That Lucian is going to be very strong through this mid game here. Uh, definitely one of the stronger mid game AD carries Ooh, with such and we do high see... damage spells. And so much coming out. Celesteri on a absolute tear right now as Cupic goes down. Kitsune. Uh, or Cupic takes down Kitsune as Celesteri being chased down by Two Sky. Now Busty Senpai will be taken down as well. There's that teleport advantage you were talking about. Yeah, uh, able to make massive use of that right there. Two Sky having completed his uh, Om Omnivecker. What the heck's that? Omni? Oh, I can't remember what that item's called. The damage over time Rift Maker. It, it has a, a name that uh, tricks me. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think it's because you're thinking of Ohm Wrecker from before. I, I for sure am. I'm totally thinking of that. Uh, but uh, yeah, a uh, lot of damage coming from that item. Obviously, getting that completion, using the teleport, bringing himself into there. Uh, it looked like there was an opportunity for Kevin's Wild Boys uh, to be able to pick up uh, some picks onto the jungler and the mid laner there. But the counter from Two Sky popping in on them, uh, yeah. really, really crushing them there. Yeah, and the long range support from Canadian with the Jin Ultimate is also really huge. Getting those extra slows and even just, you know, spacing out members of Kevin's Wild Boys here as Rio Taros popping the ultimate, trying to fight off this Gwen, but she is so strong. She does take it down in a four-man gank in the top lane. Oh, one right, for one in a four-man gank, and that's not going to be it, because they've got support coming around from the side. Watery here for the backup, for the looking to save. Celestary is going to be able to walk away. Open. What a close escape for him. Going to be able to back away. Events. Doesn't lose uh, his uh, bounty, Tomorrow, fortunately Saturday. enough. Uh, he lost it uh, last fight. Lost his bounty already. Doesn't <laughs> <laughs> lose it again uh yeah massive uh very close uh play there randy's almost getting their gank turned around on them able to maintain it uh not losing a whole bunch when it was so close looked like they almost could side with randy skins no the red side both these teams just going back and forth trading blows here in the early game nine kills to ten favoring kevin's wild boys with the gold lead just Ever Nibia so slightly in the favor of, with 3k advantage. Here. 
going towards yeah, NKC, though. First though, pick here. Two tower advantage. Left, we and we are seeing different carries uh, emerging on the team. So we've got the most of the gold jungle, piled up on Lucian score. for we'll Kevin Wilds, boys, up. and Gwen with the majority of the there. gold for the uh, NKC. So top laner versus uh, AD as the primary damage unit. carries right yeah. now. Yeah, and it's... Kind of interesting having that Senna, Kennen pick into the Gwen. I feel like that's less of a lane likely. phase. Like, you're you're less picking against the Gwen so much as picking uh, Kennen for the team. Uh, mm -hmm. Because Gwen Walking does have those immunities, so she doesn't get stunned up in the trades with Ryutaro's if uh, her bubble is uh, oh up. Yeah, by the way, yeah and Kennen, one, one of those top laners here, where it is again, fairly uh, safe for uh, him to be able to see us. If you were to follow from behind, wow, we're flash to flash. And the top laner getting ganked as Kennen. Tower goes down, trying to find a way out of here, but he's not going to be able to do it. Doesn't manage to get escaped. Gets completely collapsed on. Gets killed. Didn't have his ultimate available. Looks like it's just about to come off of cooldown. Yeah, I very, think he came up as he got stunned up and could see finished a lot off of in that top lane there. And that's going to be a two-tower swing in the top lane. Uh, four towers to none now so far on the side of the NKC. And Rift Out was going to get another one. And the Inhibitor Tower really actually already goes lethal. down. Yeah, and Inhibitor damage. very vulnerable here as well, too. Rift Herald coming through for the third four shot. Brandy breaks the Inhibitor. Massive three. loss there for Kevin's Wild Boys. But they're trying to pick up something as a result. But Gwen... Uh, putting the pressure on the fear of God. Uh, Rumble does not want to get in a 1v1 one, one, one one duel and, with the Gwen uh, there. Uh, so it has to kind of play a little bit more passive. Gwen uh, able to do a little bit of a, a trade fake out there, stopping the return press from Kevin Wild Boys. out on the side of Randy Skins here. Uh, let's see if I've got game ball. Oh, sorry, chat. Uh, I think that should be fixed now. Uh, as we do get in here, I have I believe we had a stream open with the volume on, and uh, that was a problem. <laughs> oh, wowzers! Sorry about that, guys. Had uh... that did indeed get it, I think. So, hopefully. Big fight here at the Dragon Pit. We do already have the ADs out of the question. Celesteri and Canadian both down. Busty Senpai down as well, too. But that's not going to stop him. Kevin's Wild Boys are going to be able to secure... Or no, wait. Uh, sorry. NKC managed to secure that dragon there. Yeah. So that's now uh, two dragons for NKC. They picked up two Rift Heralds. So they do have two Super Minions now pressing onto that top lane. And Riotros getting chased from behind. The charm in from Cupic lands the combo, pops the top laner. Cannon not going to be able to make it towards that top side. And so much pressure on the map right now for Kevin's Wild Boys because of that top lane opening. Baron, a real possibility. Yeah, no, that Baron should be pretty free. There's almost no vision uh, for uh, Kevin's Wild Boys in that top side. Really just that one red ward in the bush and one one just behind the red buff as well now but uh that's a pretty well warded up baron yeah total vision control top side of the map control fire dragon to destroy a lot of the obstacles in the jungle as well too uh this is a very very scary uh position to be in if you're kevin's wild boys you do not want to get caught by a bush gank here Busty senpai able to pop out to get a little bit of vision onto the baron uh double warding not to maintain his vision, but to prevent them from quickly just clearing out their wards there. Yeah, and as we do get into this, Watery just farming down in the bottom lane. Doesn't have teleport, so he does have to move up towards this Baron now uh, as the wave is pushing out. And Baron will be started up here by NKC. Yeah, NKC just, uh, as soon as they clear the wards, they immediately jump onto the Baron. They're not indecisive. They're going for it. They've already got it down over 3k health. I'm Katsuni's in the way. He's coming in for this deal. He's going to look for it. He doesn't manage to get it secured by K for Kimchi. NKC picks up the Baron. Watery fighting in the jungle, getting slowed down by the Lucian. Not able to stick onto the Gwen there. Gwen uh, able to walk away. And uh, it looks like... Uh, 
Kevin's Wild Boys are going to just uh, back away, try and deal with these super minions. Canadian coming in with so much damage. Root onto the watery there. Ryotaros tries to go for the save, but is it enough? It's not quite enough. There's the tower damage helping him out. K for Kimchi taking a bunch. Gwen now the target of the tower, but now there are four members alive versus the one, now two members of Kevin Wild Boys. Baron plus super minions, a low top tower. Four members now alive. They're coming in for the fight. This is going to be possibly the last fight of the game. Cupic lands the damage onto Lucian. Lucian has died. Primary damage dealer Ryotaros getting forced away. Nice bubble from Busty Senpai. Kitsune trying to walk onto him. Two Sky doing too much damage. And that is an ace for NKC and very likely the game. Yeah, uh, it would be quite a throw to lose it at this point as the teleport coming out from... Gwen, the minions do finish it off with the Baron buff, and uh, that's game number one going the way of NKC. Yeah, great game there. Uh, really just very even for the majority of the game. Uh, really close calls, and then once it opened up, it just opened up wide. Uh, a complete um, massive taking there from NKC just uh, taking advantage after advantage. That top lane uh, opening of the map, they went from the first tower broken to three towers and an inhibitor all in a single push, uh, forcing out the top laner. The top lane tower was already so low. Getting that massive lead there allowed them to get the second dragon on the bot side. They've got full vision control. And then from that point on, they just took every single fight. Yeah, and really just the story of the carries here Gwen just so big with those initial two kills Cannon being able Rio Taros on that Cannon being able to stay alive in lane but those two kills up really just helped snowball forward as you see like top damage in the game 10 1 and 5 on that Gwen uh highest gold in the game at 12,000 so that really good carry potential from two sky and really showing off why they're one of the best teams in edmonton for sure and celesteria had a very strong performance this game uh picking up a lot of kills early on uh was six and oh leaving uh laning phase i believe uh and unfortunately for him in those team fights there were so many aggressive uh threats on the side of nkc he was able to get targeted down uh, pretty effectively by them, uh, not able to sustain his team with the carry damage that they would have needed to get through there. Uh, just too much of a threat, worrying, uh, the Seraphine, uh, Gwen, and of course the Graves from uh, K for Kimchi, all looking for him in team fights. Yeah, but this is only game one of a best of three here. We will be getting into game very shortly here as we take a quick break uh, to get the new lobby set up. And we'll be back shortly with game number two, Seeing if uh, Kevin's Wild Boys can keep themselves alive in, uh, I guess, today's play. They, they won't be knocked out no matter what they do here. So, <laughs> But will they win? But will they win? Get that important first seed and maybe match up against, get an easier path to the finals. So, 